You can be turned to First Kings chapter number 17. Old Elijah over there, you know, uh, he went to the cave and uh, what helps me is that God sustained him the whole time. He did. God took care of him. After he'd seen God's power, a woman had him on the run. Amen. That's just the way it was. But he was still in God's care. God took care of him. He did. And I believe God has a time where he pulls us away just so we can talk with him a little bit. But not only that, I believe God kept him in that cave while he got other hearts ready like Elisha. Amen. It wasn't just for Elijah. God's plan is much bigger than our little minds can, under, uh, can apprehend or even understand. But I believe when Elisha was ready and the people were, God pulled him out of that cave. He said, time to go back to work. We got more to do. Amen. Hey, I like that verse. Rejoice not, O my enemy, for where I fall, I shall arise. It ain't about the falling. It's just don't stay down. Amen. Get up. There's still more to do. Get up. Get up and keep going. Over in 1 Kings chapter number 17, very familiar passage of Scripture. Anybody that's willing and able to stand in reverence of the Word, amen, it surely ain't a me and it ain't the church, but I got Scripture to back it up. It's words worthy, amen, of some reverence, amen. 1 Kings 17, I'm going to start in about verse 2, and the Word of the Lord came unto him saying, Get thee hint, turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook chair that is before Jordan. And uh, it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. So he went and the brook chariot, and that was before Jordan. The ravens brought, the ravens brought him bread and, and uh, flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. It came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, get into their path which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the woman there was gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou said, but make me therefore of a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after her, make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of milk shall not waste, neither shall a cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did. Thank God I underlined that. Thank God for people that just do it. Amen. According to the saying of Elijah, and she and her house did eat many days. Lord, we're thankful for your word. We're thankful for what we've already gotten. Now, Lord, I pray you'd use me. God, I'll be the microphone. You do the preaching. And we'll be very careful, Lord, to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And we'll say it's been good to have been here with you. Now, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can be seated. I'm going to make it simple and sweet. I ain't going to get into this too much. But I always seem to notice the details. Amen. It wasn't just that she was gathering sticks, but it said two sticks. Amen. That caught my attention. Amen. Why in the world would she just get two sticks? <laughs> and uh, I got to doing a little studying. And, and uh, the thing that I noticed is she had a little meal. Amen. And she had a little oil. But she didn't have everything she needed to put it together. Amen. She just didn't have everything. You can go back. That happens every now and then. Abraham and Isaac was going up. And the son even noticed, thank God, for a heritage. That boy knew what was going on because he'd seen it before. And he said, I see the fire. I see the wood. I see all the stuff. But where's the lamb? And Abraham said, don't worry. Thank God. He will provide himself a lamb. Even when the boy laid down, I believe he did it submissively. I believe we find that happens more than once. Amen. And he laid down willing. He knew what was coming. But once again, God did what he said he would. 
and he provided that lamb to the one that was willing to go and do what had to be done. But back to those two sticks again. She realized she had some of it, but she didn't have it all. She just had two sticks that she needed for what? The fire. We can have all the stuff we can have all the ingredients, but if there ain't no fire, it just don't get done. i tell you what, hey, I, I'll be honest with you, in the last several years, we've walked away from some things, Brother Paul. I've walked away from good jobs. Hey, listen, I have. I'm not tooting my horn. I just want you to listen to me. I come to the place, Brother Daniel, I'm tired of just getting by. I said, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go, and he'll try you on that, where I thought I'd be forever. God said, get up, get out. I got something else and within a week's time another church voted me in I thought I was going to get a breather and they didn't even call me and ask me (laughs) I said what in the world of course it was the church my daddy pastored for 33 years he probably don't want could have got away with that not even ask me a week after I was hurting a little bit I was hurting a lot and I didn't even get a week, Brother Daniel. So another church done boated me in. We walked in that Sunday morning just going to visit and be with them. And Daddy looks around and said, Hell, church, there's your new pastor. I was scared to look at my wife. But she wasn't looking at me. She whispered under her breath, Did you know about this? I said, Do I look like I know about this? That's the closest to shipwreck. But I'm glad God was with me. Let me tell you something. You don't judge the people that surround you. The Bible said, lay not your hands on God's anointing. So I don't care what you think. I'm in His will. I don't care what he does with me, Brother Daniel. I surrendered and said, God, I'll do what you said. My wife used to manage and break uh, the, the, the bank over there in the town we live in. She had rose up, Brother uh, Doug. We were doing well, making good. God said, get away from that. I believe the, the Bible's very clear when it said, it is impossible to please God without faith. I said, Lord, I'm yours. You're mine. You've never failed me. I don't want to fail you no more. Can I say that? And I stepped away from things. And people said, what is he doing? Why did you do that? And I'm sure that I got that again when I walked away from one church, wound up passing another week later. Hey, you talk about people talking. Hey, man. Hey, I mean, people thought, what in the world's going on? Hey, just for the record, I didn't know either. I was just doing what God said do. Hey, man. I still trust him this morning. Even through the hurt, he's been faithful. Why, preacher, would he do that? I said, God, I don't want to just be another preacher. I said, God, I don't want to just look like something that people see me and remember my name but I want them to see the scars that they'll know who I represent thank God I want to have some scars that people say that looks like something I've seen before I believe when Jesus broke bread with his people at the table remember that and he disappeared but they saw the scars and they knew who he was I say thank God for some scars in the fight I need fire two sticks ain't much oh but little is much when God is in it them two sticks made a cake now she thought now listen just so you know (laughs) just so you know that widow woman evidently knew the Lord because the Bible didn't just tell him go over and tell her he said I've already told her Thank God for some people that are just like you that are saying, God, I can't preach. Lord, I can't do much. But I'm yours. I want to do what... Yeah, she was in a desperate time. She was in a needful place. Are you with me? I mean, this was a bad time. It hadn't rained. How do you know? Well, that's why I believe God put Elijah over there at the brook so we could prove there was a dry in the land. There was no growth. She was hurting, but I believe any of her prayers when she said, God, I need, but God, I just want you. 
God, I want to do something for you because I know you're going to do something for me. And God said, there's a man coming. I need you to feed him. She's thinking, I ain't got much. But God wanted it all. I'm glad, thank God, even though she questioned it just for a minute, like all of us do, like all of us do. Hey, when I found out I was pastoring again, I questioned it, Brother Doug. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't question God. I said, I questioned me. How are we supposed to do? What'd you do, preacher? It got me a few sticks. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I got me a few sticks. I said, Lord, what I got yours, I'll put it to it. I said, just give me the fire. I get in that old pulpit. <laughs> Brother Doug, a week of worrying and beating and down and hurt. Get back in that old pulpit and the fire comes again. Hey, we get cooking. Hey, man. <laughs> I mean, boy, God shows up and the fire gets hot. People start weeping. People start praying. God gets real. He gets on again. I ain't looking for nothing but God. I don't need nothing else but God. I just want His fire. I want to get it cooking. Hey, man. <laughs> got two sticks you read about it last night with Paul he just got a few sticks but he rekindled the fire yeah. I appreciate that sometimes it needs to be rekindled the flame has flickered but the fire's never gone out but somewhere the fire had to get started and I'm going to wrap it right here Hey, this will be a record for me <laughs> Of course, I ain't done yet. <laughs> Yay! Watch my wife. She'll say, oh, Lord. <laughs> Why just two sticks? Kept sticking in my mind. But I'm going to tell you what. With two big sticks. <laughs> hey! With two big sticks. God lit a fire in me. Where sin came in the world by one man. Thank God with just two sticks. Fire got lit. Fire still burning. Fire still going. Thank God for two sticks. Thank God for two sticks. There's a reason them numbers. That's all God needed was two. Church, I believe when a couple preachers come together. Just a couple. What do we read else? We're two or more gathered. There he'd be also. And if he's there, you mark her down, the fire's coming. Thank God for just two sticks. Yeah, man, that's it, Brother Doug. Come on. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.